one of my pet phrases is, when you say nothing is happening as I'm sitting there, either literally nothing is happening, in which case you are in, uh, you are in cessation. You're in nirvana itself. And that's great. Or that's not the case. <laughs> In which case, six things are happening. Your body is physically relaxed, your eyes are defocused, your ears are defocused, your body is emotionally neutral, your mental screen is blank, and your head is quiet. That's six sensory events are going on. If you pay attention to those as tangible events, then something is happening when nothing much is happening. And that brings a clarity component into the experience of nothing much is happening. And guess what? That will now tend to bring a growth component back into the big picture of your practice. The absorption jhana shamatha practice, as it's described, represents a thinning out of self and world. What is thin is penetratable. You go into these absorption states and then you penetrate the restful factors, or the jhanic factors, for me it's restful factors, the awareness soaks into them and what do they become? Flow and go. They break up into vibrating void. So there's what's called sukha vipassana, which is dry vipassana, where if we put it into my language, you go directly from touch, sight, sound, or feel, image, talk, you, go, you do a direct penetration and it dissolves into vibrating void. That's called dry vipassana. Or there's the absorption path where you get things all thinned out in, once again, my personal language. Instead of touch, sight, sound, it's relaxation, light, silence. Instead of feel, image, talk, it's peace, blank, quiet. Then you penetrate those into flow and go because they're more easily penetrated because they're more thinned out. But either way, get you to the same result. So focus on chains, once again, be, enters in when you do the vipassana, what are called the vipassana jhanas, where you're penetrating the jhanic factors. So that's why I have to focus on change. Focus on rest, as I like to teach it to people. There are two, ver two sort of ways of doing it. The standard way that I just described, working with restful flavors. And then there's the advanced version of focus on rest, which I call do nothing. But I have a very clear definition of what it means to do nothing. Okay, Do nothing isn't twiddle your thumbs and let your mind wander. Yeah, there's a certain way to do nothing that allows you to do that, to have that be a growth experience. And uh, the, the do nothing is my reworking, once again, a reworking. I don't claim these are the same thing. It's modified, reworked. But it's my reworking of the, the whole bundle of approaches that we find worldwide that might be described as anti-meditation. Um, in the sense that instead of making an effort, instead of engaging in the noble quest, you, in the words of one of the teachers in that tradition, uh, Papaji, you call off the search. <laughs> I love that phrase, call off the search. You stop trying to meditate and you uh, stop trying to do anything and you just abide uh, without trying. <laughs> you come to abide in the nature uh, of consciousness. In the Tibetan tradition, this is Dzogchen and Mahamudra. In terms of Zen, some of the early Zen uh, uh, tranquil illumination schools of Zen where they wouldn't, they just like, it was a non-doing, so some interpretations of just sitting, some interpretations of choiceless awareness, some interpretations of non-dual awareness sort of work this way. As I mentioned, there's two sides to the path, and it's paradoxical. There's a, a place for bearing down, there's a place for easing up, there's a place for doing something, 
and there's a place for not doing anything at all. So the not doing anything at all I call do nothing. If I had to say what what's my model in it, it's it's Dzogchen as I understand it, which admittedly uh, I'm certainly not a scholar or a, a deep practitioner of that tradition, but I have some sense of what it's about, and I use my own categories and sort of made made something that is based on those their themes. They talk about the spacious nature of consciousness, but they also talk about the effortless, spontaneous, dynamic nature of consciousness. I take the, that effortless, dynamic nature of consciousness to be the, uh, the flow aspect. Even within the, uh, the sort of do-nothing approach, you're, you're not, certainly not meditating on change. You're not doing focus on change. But the fact is, as you come to abide in the spacious nature of consciousness, the, the dynamism of that spacious nature presents itself to you as effortless expansion and contraction. So even the do-nothing is not totally unrelated to the themes of focus on change. 